Hello guys and welcome to another Living With A Mazda MX-5 episode. I know, I know, it's been a very long time since the last one, but what can I say, I've been busy. Now, as you may know, I do have the brand new Fiat 124 Spider this week, so I thought it'd be quite interesting to compare that with my Mark II MX-5. Now, I've not driven the new MX-5, so I can't compare the 124 Spider to that, but I still thought it'd be quite interesting to compare it to this one, even though this is 17 years old and that's only a few months old. But Anyway, without further ado, let's do this. So here we go, we've got the two cars side by side, and I have to say it's not a bad sight at all. So as you can probably see, the roofs have been put down, just as it was easier to do it whilst I wasn't holding the camera, and plus it gives you a better look on the inside. So there we go, so both cars have got leather upholstery and a leather steering wheel. Uh, the 124 Spider has got a six speed manual, whereas the MX-5 has got a five speed manual. Now, from what I've read on forums, this generation of MX-5 with uh, six speed manual, from what I read anyway, I've not experienced it myself, but the six speed wasn't as good, so I've got the five speed manual. Again, leather steering wheel, leather seats, obviously showing a little bit of wear and tear, but they're actually rather good condition. So in regards to looks, guys, which do you prefer? Do you prefer the MX-5 or do you prefer the retro inspired 124 Spider? For me, it's really difficult because I'm comparing a new car against my car um, and I, I think it's a draw um, actually no, that's not quite right I do prefer the look of a 124 Spider. it's just sharper and I really like these headlights these are LED by the way because it's the top of a range model but I'm going to be biased this is my car I love this blue and I think it looks fantastic at the back because this is the limited edition sport model You've got the rear spoiler, you've got the mud flaps as well, and you've got the body kit. And I have to say, I think it looks really good. Now, two differences in regards to the roof. Oh, sorry about the autofocus, guys. The autofocus on this camera is pretty shoddy. So, on the MX-5, you've got two clips, one either side, whereas in the 124 Spider, you've got just one clip, which you won't be able to see. Let me just pull this lever, like so. There we go, got one clip there, and let's pop that back down. So yes, those are the interiors. Obviously with 124 Spider, you have more technology. So you've got the seven inch touchscreen, you've also got the premium sound system. Come on auto focus, you can do it. Nope, okay, I'm gonna have to take control. There we go, so you've got the Bose sound system. It is a good system, but I don't think it's the best I've ever experienced in a car, in all honesty. Now in regards to practicality, obviously these cars aren't uh, bought for practicality. Autofocus is having a fit again. I do apologize guys, it is bad, but it's not normally this bad, there we go. So you've got 140 liters in here. It's actually quite a deep boot, it goes down quite far. And if I'm not mistaken, the boot of the MX-5 is also 140 litres. If it isn't, it's not too far off. But it does have a different shape, so if I open this up like so. Um, it's got quite, quite a bit of rubbish in it. So it's not as deep, but in my eyes anyway, it does look a little bit wider. Oh, I was looking for these trainers. And there they are. But obviously, like I say, these cars aren't bought for practicality. Anyway, that is enough talking gone on for quite a bit already let's actually do some driving shall we there's an idea right then so i've jumped into the mx5 first purely because uh, i was actually parked in someone else's bay and i didn't want to leave it there secondly it's been almost two weeks since i drove this car i know two weeks is far too long so i thought it's about time i fired her up and take her out for a quick spin now i haven't got a great deal of time so i need to be somewhere else so this isn't going to be for world's longest drive plus it's not a lot of petrol in it if i'm honest but I should be able to get enough of an idea to really compare the two. Now one of the key differences between my car and the 124 Spider is turbo, or in my case, a lack of turbo. So my car is powered by a 1.8 litre naturally aspirated petrol engine, which produces 140 horsepower, I had to think about that one then, uh, with 162 newton metres of torque. This means it will hit 60 in about, well, almost eight seconds at the top speed is almost 130 miles per hour. 
Whereas, oh, wrong gear. Turn the indicator off. The 124 Spider, however, is a smaller engine. It's a 1.4 litre petrol, but importantly, it's turbocharged. So it has the same horsepower, 140 horsepower, but it has 170 newton meters of torque. Eh, eh, that's wrong. I'm not too sure why I said 170 newton meters of torque, because I knew in my head it's actually 240. So apologies, guys, it's not 170, it's 240. So therefore, it does have a fair bit more torque. So it does have a little bit more torque, but the car is a little bit heavier. This is 1,047 kilograms, whilst the 124 Spider is 1,050 kilograms. Okay, there's only three bags of sugar in it, but it all counts. So in regards to performance figures, they are quite evenly matched, as you would expect. So the MX-5 will hit 60 in almost 8 seconds, and the top speed is almost 130 miles per hour. Whereas the 124 Spider, it hits um, 60 miles per hour a little quicker. It hits 62 miles per hour in 7.5 seconds, and the top speed is 134. So there's not much in it in regards to power and performance, but because this isn't actually aspirated, the power is kind of there when you want it. Whereas in the 124 Spider, I have detected AC Cobra. That's what I've detected. Very nice. Might be in a replica, but you never know. Um, but I have detected a little bit of turbo lag in the 124 Spider. Sometimes you put your foot down. You get a few moments where nothing happens, then the boost comes in and it will get you moving. Whereas in the MX-5, because it's naturally aspirated, all you have to do is kind of poke the throttle and it, you get an instant pickup. And it is actually quite nippy. Okay, it's not out and out fast, but it will get you going. It will get you going, that's for certain. So another difference between my MX-5 and the 124 Spyder is I've got a limited slip diff. Ha 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 Whereas 124 Spider has to make do with an open diff. So it means that it's just more fun in the corners. And I feel this is more planted in the corners. The 124 Spider does have a bit of body lean, which is a little bit disappointing. <laughs> a little bit sideways there. <laughs> I think it was some loose gravel on the floor. <laughs> um, so I... Oh, it's really difficult to kind of really compare them in the corners because they're both really good, but this feels more planted if you ask me. It just feels a little bit more focused, feels, feels like a little bit more precise. The, the nose sort of goes where, where you want it to go a little bit more. Whereas in 124 Spider, quite a few people have said it, well, quite a few reviewers have said it, and I agree with them. The 124 Spider feels more like a cruiser. Oh, speaking of 124 Spiders, ha! There goes one there. So in regards to driving positions, they're rather similar. Now in the 124 Spider, you can move the steering wheel up and down, whereas with this, it's completely fixed. I can't do anything with it at all. But that's not to say that I can't get comfortable. Yes, the steering wheel is quite close to my thighs, but when you're driving the car, you don't really notice it in all honesty, especially when you're having a fair bit of fun. Right. The brakes aren't as good on my MX-5, if, if I'm going to be honest. But it's an older car, so the brakes aren't always going to be fantastic. One thing I find disappointing about the 124 Spyder is that when you turn on the ignition and start the engine, you get like a nice burble from the exhaust. You think, oh, hello, this sounds a bit meaty. But then when you drive it, even with the roof down, it's quite muted and you can't really hear it. That's really disappointing, whereas with this, because you need to rev it more for it to actually move and to get going, you do hear it a little bit more. So I'm going to slip it into second. Oh. So the car certainly picks up the more you rev it. And for me, that is actually more fun. Now, I do like a turbo. I love a turbo, in fact. But in this, it's just it's something more rewarding about having to really rev it to get some progress. <laughs> Steering is nice and direct. It's quite nicely weighted. Is it heavier than the 124 Spider? It's difficult, it's not much in it. 
not in my opinion anyway. Right, turn left here, into second. <laughs> oh god. I have missed the MX-5 so, so much. Oh, Mark 1. Ooh. It's quite a tidy Mark 1 actually, I quite like a bit of alloys on that. So if you're watching and it's yours, good spec. Right, in the 124 Spider now, obviously. Ah, almost forgot. There we go. And click it in like so. Right. So. Like I say, it does sound pretty good, but when you're on the move, you can't really hear it too well. I do find the traction control cuts in too early on the, on the uh, MX-5 of the 124 Spider. I've got MX-5 on the brain now. So the traction control needs to be a little bit more relaxed. And uh, if truth, I actually drove this with the traction control off yesterday. And um, that was quite lively. That was quite lively, to say the least. I would also say that the throw in the six-speed manual definitely feels a little bit longer than the MX-5. But it's still quite short, it's still quite snappy. You can still throw it, throw it into gear quite easily. <laughs> so even when you rev it hard with the roof down, you, could, you don't really hear much. It's kind of disappointing. You know, it's, you've got an Italian engine, Italian sports car, kind of, and you expect... Uh, you expect some sort of symphony and you don't get it. Let me just drop it down a second. Okay, granted it was a little bit louder there, but did it sound interesting? Not really, not if you ask me. So I would argue that the 124 Spider feels heavier than the MX-5, it is heavier, but as I said earlier, it's only three kilograms, so it's not really a lot, is it? It's three bags of sugar, but it doesn't, feel quite as agile as the MX-5 if you ask me. Now let's see what the steering's like around this roundabout. I would say this feels a little bit more direct. The weight is about the same. I'd say this probably feels a little lighter but again there's not a great deal in it the ride is also smoother and a little bit more refined in the 124 spider as well but my mx5 has got sports suspension so it's always bound to be a little bit firmer but the mx5 isn't particularly uncomfortable i've driven it on long journeys with no real complaints but the 124 spider definitely feels i'd say it feels more grown up in its ride Definitely, for sure. Now, I would say that my MX-5 corner is better than this does because this has got a fair bit of body lean, so when you turn it in, it sort of fills up, fills up the car, is sort of pitching its weight either side rather than staying nice, nice and flat. But the grip is still pretty good. Oh. 124 Spider definitely feels quicker with that turbo. As I said earlier, now and then you do get a hint of turbo lag. Well, a little bit more of a hint, but either way. But when it isn't there, this car just flies. And it feels like it would hit 62 miles per hour a little bit quicker than, come on mate, than um, 7.5 seconds. That does feel a little bit um, pessimistic. So it's getting dark above the second, so it's about time I wrap this video up. So the MX-5 and the 124 Spider. For me personally, I feel like the MX-5 is more agile, it's more poised and it's more focused. So in the corners, it just feels a little bit more responsive and a little bit more accurate. Whereas in the 124 Spider, yes, it still corners well and it's still got a good level of grip. I feel there's more body lean and it doesn't feel quite as focused. And for me, 
and quite a few other people have said it in some of the reviews I've uh, I've read. The 124 feels more like a cruiser. It's still got a fair amount of poke and it still handles well, as I've said previously, but you get a sense that the 124 Spider would be at its happiest cruising down to the south of France, whereas for MX-5, that wants to find the nearest B road and attack it with all of its might. But they are both very fun cars to drive. Which would I have? Come on guys, you know what I'm gonna say. My MX-5, of course. But other than that, time to end guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more Car Obsession.